This is our second session on Colossians 3, 15 to 17. And I said last time we would try to understand the function of this word rule. And let the peace of Christ, we'll talk about that again, like we did last time. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. So, Father, as we focus now on how peace rules, I pray that we would so understand it and so embrace it that indeed in our hearts and in our relationships, the effect would be that Christ's peace really would govern in a way that peace is established. Christ's peace. And I ask this in his name. Amen. I put the Greek word for this verb, rule, here, because in English, the word rule almost inevitably, in a context like this, sounds like the work of a king or ruler of some kind like that, whereas this word doesn't carry that connotation. This is not reign like a king. That's basiluo. This brabueto here is rule like an umpire, like a referee, like a line judge in a football game, a person who uh, decides who gets the prize in the race or in the game, who kept the rules, who stepped out of bounds, who cheated, what is making for a successful prize attainment. And I put this here so that we could track it down in the three other forms it occurs in. So the noun form occurs here, the noun right there. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So the verb is who decides who gets the prize. The noun is the prize. Here it is again in Philippians 3.14. I press on toward the goal for the prize, same word, the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So when, when something functions as an, as an umpire or a rule a judge, in this case, it's who gets the prize, who, who has kept the rules and wins the game. Here's a negative form of the verb in Colossians 2.18. Let no one disqualify you. So here's the verb, brabuito, and here's the negative rule against, rule against. Let no one rule against you. Let no one count you out of the race, insisting on asceticism, worship of angels, going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by their sensuous mind, claiming that these are the real rules you have to go by, and thus disqualifying you when, in fact, you are keeping biblical Christianity. So, the very word itself, brabueto, isn't a ruling of a king with a scepter or the ruling of a law court. It's the ruling of an umpire or a referee or a line judge, somebody who's deciding who wins the race, who stepped out of bounds, who cheated, and therefore who gets the, the wreath. Now, here's the question then. How does the peace of Christ effectively, practically function like that in the body of Christ and in our hearts. Let it rule 
as indeed you were called in the one body. And what I would stress is it doesn't just stop conflict, but it um, introduces into all disputes and all conversations and all um, tensions in our lives, it introduces this, this reality, this force, peace of Christ. Now, to remind ourselves what that implies, let's go back and see the peace of Christ as Paul unpacks it in its fullest place. Now, in Christ Jesus, you were once far off, but have been brought near by the blood of Christ. This is what it cost for us alienated people to be brought together, the blood of Christ. So when you hear the phrase, peace of Christ, you should hear, blood bought peace. That's a powerful factor to introduce into conflict. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh. So his blood was shed, his flesh was rent, and thus he tore down the dividing wall of hostility. That's going away because of this enormous price. By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of two, so making peace that he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross. So you got blood, flesh, cross. That's the cost of the peace of Christ, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and he preached peace, blood-bought peace, flesh-rent peace, cross-nails peace to you who are far off. So I think utterly essential to making sense of this is to take very seriously not just the word peace, like, oh, peaceful feelings are going to uh, fix things. They're, They're going to function as a arbiter among squabbling parties. No, it won't. Only if it is of Christ. In other words, there is a massive reality in this peace, a massive reality under this peace, enabling this peace, informing this peace. In fact, I would go here to the next verse, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, argue that this comes right after this because the word informs of Christ. Word of Christ informs peace of Christ. So the question then, how does it how does it actually work when you have a have a dispute? So the way I see it happening is that here you have you have me or you and me or you, and we're really mad at each other. There's some serious conflict here. One of us has offended the other, or both of us has. And the peace of Christ ruling means that all of our conversations, all of our relations, all of our efforts relate to each other are done with the consciousness or or awareness that Christ's blood-bought peace is deciding the rules here and who keeps them. So that if I speak in a certain way or you act in a certain way, the peace of Christ, the blood-bought, word-informed peace of Christ says, no, that's out of bounds here. That's not serving my blood-bought peace. So 
We, we saw Paul do that here in Colossians 3.8. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk. Those are the ways that we relate to each other when the peace of Christ is not governing, it's not arbitrating. But if you put the peace of Christ in the room, And remind yourself of what it cost. It cost him his flesh. It cost him his blood to bind Christians together. And you put that front and center in our hearts and in our minds. Remember, in our hearts, not just in our relations, in our hearts. You put that together. That uh, line keeper is going to say, out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds. It's going to make judgments like that and thus function for us in making not only internal but uh, intra-member, that is, within the body of Christ, peace, the kind of peace that glorifies what Christ actually achieved.